There was a point where two-in-one laptops or convertibles were pretty gimmicky and priced really high. These days though, the prices have gotten a lot more competitive and getting a two-in-one convertible, it's a realistic option, you know, whether it's for people looking to do schoolwork or just work work. It's no surprise that AMD, you know, AMD does offer the best bang for your buck in this segment. So I decided to get some of the most popular convertibles to see what it is that you can actually get out of these. Forget numbers, forget benchmarks. From a practical standpoint, how is it to use a two-in-one laptop at a reasonable price point, which in this case is 70 to 80,000 rupees. Now that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech, and if you do end up liking what you see, Thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's get started. Let me start with a little bit of advice. Now, every choice you make with tech, you're gonna pay for it. I mean, the best device you can get is the best one you actually need. As in, see what your needs are and make sure you're paying only for what you need. So say you need performance, don't care much about portability, get a desktop. If you need portability, don't care much for Windows, get an Android tablet or an iPad. Continuing with that same line of thinking, Let's start with finding an answer to who actually needs a two-in-one convertible. With regular laptops, your screen goes to 100 and something degrees, maybe sometimes a full 180. But two-in-ones have special hinges that let you flip that screen around. And at this point, the keyboard gets disabled, kinda sorta converting the device into a tablet. And oh yeah, two-in-one devices have touch screens to let you interact with the display. And that brings us to the question of what advantages does this unique form factor bring to the table? Windows 11 is probably the most touch-friendly Windows yet. Now, I'm not gonna say the touch experience is Android or iPadOS level, but it's a lot more optimized now than it used to be. We get bigger sub-menus and toggles are more touch-friendly, gestures are available. In fact, I've gotten so used to the mixed usage of touch and keyboard that I miss having touch when going back to a regular laptop. So basically, if you wanna do tablet stuff, a convertible is gonna let you do just that. It even gets you a built-in stand. Now, if you wanna save more space on your desk, you can use it in the tent mode. Recently, we saw another kind of two-in-one laptop here on C4E Tech, the MateBook E, that was a two-in-one too, but a detachable, meaning it basically was a tablet with a keyboard add-on. While that form factor does have its pros, it also makes the end product top heavy, so you can't really use detachables on your lap or in bed. You're gonna need a stable surface to be able to use it with the keyboard in its laptop mode. Now that's not the case with convertibles, given they are closer to regular laptops than tablets, they are easier to use on uneven surfaces. Now just like with detachables, most of these also include stylus support, with some like the Lenovo Yoga 6, you even get a stylus in the box. The Lenovo Digital Pen, which can be useful if you wanna jot down notes or sketch. It's also worth noting, while there are exceptions, more often than not, two-in-one convertibles pack in above average speakers. And this is one area where you have advantages over not just tablets, but also regular laptops. There's more space than on tablets to include speakers here, meaning you often get a more powerful pair. And compared to laptops, you can adjust the positioning. Now with a laptop, if the speakers are downwards firing, it's easy for them to get muffled. But here, since you can adjust the positioning, you can make sure they're firing in a certain direction to get the best media experience possible. And of course, with at least a 5500U under the hood, even 4K video playback is gonna be flawless. There is one issue as a result though, given these are special hinges, it's pretty much impossible to open these hybrids with a single finger. You're almost always gonna have to resort to using both hands. Now, from a performance perspective, in this 70 to 80,000 rupees segment, the best bang for your buck is gonna be with the Ryzen's. It's mostly gonna be the 5500U or the 5700U. The 5500U that you're seeing here is a seven nanometer processor, Zen 2 base, six cores, 12 threads. So it does let you do quite a bit. I tried some editing with DaVinci Resolve, and while it's not gonna slice through 4K edits, it's definitely usable, good in a pinch. And hell, AMD's graphic drivers are so much better than Intel's that even gaming on these is a possibility. As long as you don't go in expecting high graphics on AAA titles, even games like GTA V run well enough. I had an excellent time with Hades, for example. It's pretty nice. Given this kind of gaming performance coding or regular office use with spreadsheets and documents should be a breeze. So guys, here's the breakdown. We've seen the advantages you get with two-in-one convertibles. Like I said at the start of this video, everything tech comes at a cost. Now, are these advantages important to you? If the answer is yes, then a convertible, it's gonna be a good choice for you. If not, you can settle for a regular laptop. You could get more performance for the same price. 
because roughly a 5700U laptop is gonna cost you about the same as a 5500U convertible. And that's the price you pay for getting parts of a laptop and a tablet in one unique form factor. And either way, Ryzen chips are pretty much unbeatable from a price to performance standpoint, regardless of whatever it is that you end up choosing. So what would you choose in this segment? Would you go for a convertible, maybe a detachable, or settle for a regular old laptop? What is your use case? What do you think is the best option for you? Leave a comment down below. Anyways, that's been it for this video. I wanted to try something different and zeroed in on convertibles. If you found this video useful, please do drop a like, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. And I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.